Welcome to Out and About with Martin and the Dunrobin falconry display. Before we see the birds flying, let's have a close up look at them. And the first bird here is the grey falcon. Next we have the peregrine falcon. Here we have a hybrid. A prairie falcon crossed with a peregrine falcon. And the final bird we have here is the Harris Hawk, which is the first of the two birds that we will see flying today. A hawk and a falcon. So we're hoping to show you all that here today. <coughs> Hawks have got completely different physique to falcons and they do hunt in a completely different way. Now have a look when <coughs> He does have a very broad wing, quite wide from the front edge to the back edge. He's also got quite rounded edges towards Hector's wings here. He does have a much longer tail than the falcon and he does have very long legs. Now Hector, he is a non-native species of hawk from Scotland or the UK. Hector's actually coming from the Americas. His native home the Arizona Desert, <laughs> <laughs> the Mojave Desert, Sonoran Desert, and his range would be down right down through the arid coast of Mexico and right down into Peru. And this is why I've called all my Paris uh, uh, Spanish names. We have Hector, Amigo down the bottom, and we have two girls resting who will be uh, flying midsummer, uh, Juanita and Aggie. <laughs> so the reason why I'm using Harry Sox above the native Gossock, I'd like you to be aware, Harry Sox are the only birds of prey in the world that are gregarious in the wild. And that means they live and they hunt in packs. They're the only birds of prey that do do that. Have a look at Hector, he's got a large white patch to the base of his tail. And I'd like you to be aware, uh, he will be using that as a communication aid when he's hunting his pack members in the deserts of America. He'll be catching such things as rabbit-sized mammals, anything down through the range of rodents. They do catch a lot of quail in the American desert, and I believe quite a number of snakes in their diet in the wild also. But when Hector spread around the desert floor and the whole pack is looking for something to hunt, he will start to find once he's found something, he'll start to flash this white patch around the desert floor by using his tail and that's telling all the other pack members, hey, come and help me, I found something to hunt. As the hawk would gather uh, to the um, cactus where the hawk has been flashing the tail, usually there's no more standing room, uh, usually the last remaining pack members to join the hunt from further afield will use these long legs and they'll be the ones that are flushing out the game all the other Harry Sox above. And this is how the Harry Sox work as a team. And quite often I'm asked by the youngsters here at the Robin, uh, I'm asked, Andy, uh, do you mean a bit like the Velociraptors? <laughs> <laughs> well, after thinking about it, everyone, let's face it, anything that lays an egg today is a direct descendant of a dinosaur. And these meat-eating predators working as a team, who actually knows? They could be the last remaining remnants of the Velociraptor. Mm -hmm. starting to suggest uh, a lot of the dinosaurs did have feathers. Now his design is to be a, 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 a low level sprinter from around 45 <laughs> miles per hour from a standing start. And he can do this quite easily in the desert when he's chasing such creatures his longer tail than the falcon enables him to manoeuvre through the scrub and this is how they would catch. His feet are very powerful and <coughs> scientists have told me that he can administer about a thousand pounds worth of pressure. About the same as a medium sized dog can with a bite and driving those in long talons in. He's also got a very specialised ratchet system uh, going on with each one of his joints on his feet. Now as he goes down on this level of the pressure to hang on to such thing as the rabbit-sized mammal, he can lock his feet wherever he likes, 
and you can then relax his muscle at the same time. Maintaining that pressure, that's how he can hang on to a live rabbit for so long, waiting for his pack members to come and help him. Now I'm hoping to show you the difference between a hunting hawk and a hunting falcon here today. And we said that Hector, with his uh, design of build, can fly at around 45 miles per hour. I'm not sure if you're aware, but here in the UK we do catch rabbits, squirrels and pheasants with the Harry Hawk. And the reason why they've become so popular is because of their gregariousness. It means that uh, friends who meet us at the weekend can probably fly more than one Harry Hawk at one time. And by having these domesticated tame uh, hawks here, it's uh, still not far from being wild, let's face it. As they follow us through the trees and with a dog, we can flush game such as rabbits, pheasants, and grey squirrels, especially you need two of these Harry socks to catch those, which is the pet species. Uh, you can have great fun with the Harry socks. Now, I'm hoping to show you a hunting demonstration here this morning exactly how Hector would catch something such as a rabbit. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but rabbits can run at the speed of 35 miles per hour and Hector flying at 45 does have the flight advantage. There's a young man in the audience who's agreed to help me with a demonstration here this morning. His name's Elwa. So Elwa, if you come and join me. Thank you, Elwa. Don't go to my side. Okay, if you're the lawn, we'll take one of the perches on the side of the lawn. If he doesn't, I'll get him on my floor. And young Elwa is about to attempt shortly to a run down Dunrobin Lawn at 35 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> the same speed as a rabbit in the hope to show you all how we would catch one in the wild. Okay, catch that one. And even now, today, I can go out with Hector on his own, not even with any other hawks, 
We can quite easily catch in an hour and a half, usually between three or four rabbits, uh, maybe uh, three pheasants, maybe a duck. So quite large amounts again can be gathered. And this is why falcon became so popular before the invention of the gun. In fact, have a look here, Hector does have a special storage area for food. It's called a crop. Now the crop is a special bag below the beak but on top of the chest. And as this food is stored here, uh, it does not trickle down to his digestion system for about an hour, an hour and a half, which gives the falconer an open window to carry on hunting. And with a falconer, a, a hawk and a dog, you can gather large amounts of food, which is why uh, it became so popular throughout Europe <coughs> before the invention of the gun. The first writings of falconry, we believe, were around the 4th century in Chinese, and it very quickly travelled down the silk routes and the trade routes to become very popular in Europe. Now, even though we associate falconry with royalty and nobility, uh, around the 11th century and forward, any working class man throughout Europe who had the knowledge of falconry was allowed to trap and train a wild native goshawk from the woods for the purpose of gathering game for his family. And just imagine if you have three or four children and you had that knowledge, you could go into the woods in the winter time for an hour, an hour and a half, you've got the back of those woods there. It's quite easy to come home with three or four pheasants and maybe four or five rabbits. How important would that be to a working class family? <coughs> this development of the crop, uh, which eagles, hawks and falcons do have, enables them in the wild uh, to protect their prey or kill if you like. Owls, by the way, do not have crops. Their food goes directly into their tummy. And this is why owls were never utilised by our ancestors for gathering food. But this hawk here in the in the wilds of say Arizona, or even our native goshawk here, if he was to catch something such as a rabbit on the floor, that would be too heavy to fly away with. And in his uh, Arizona desert, if he was compromised by a coyote or a desert fox, by eating quickly and storing food here, after covering it with his wings like you saw Hector doing, if, he, if that did not work and the uh, uh, ground predator was persistent, he could fly away to safety on top of the cactus, hoping that enough food is stored there quickly to give the hawk enough energy to go hunting again tomorrow. And it was the hawk that was always renowned through the history of falconry as being the chef's bird. You will catch way more game with a hawk like this than you ever will do a super fast falcon. Okay, the next bird we have to fly to this morning in contrast to the hawk is a falcon and it's the gyr falcon spelled G-Y-R. Coming from the Arctic tundra, they are the largest of all species of falcon. And living on the tundra, their main quarry species or game or prey is ptarmigan, a form of grouse on the tundra. And as we circumnavigate the globe, they do come in many different colour forms. We have pure white gyr falcons from Siberia. We have uh, grey faced gyr falcons from Iceland like uh, pepper down the bottom. We have black gyr falcons from Labrador in Canada. And they're all the same species as they circumnavigate the globe. This morning, we're gonna fly a Greenland phase of gyr falcon and the name is Alba. So give me a minute, we'll get the falcon ready for you next. Oh. 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 And everyone, please don't panic about your pictures if you don't get one during the display. I will be stood on the edge of the lawn for you all to get a nice shot of the falcon with the castle in the background. And any questions that you may have on falconry, <coughs> I'll be there to answer for you. But let's note, uh, Alba here, she does have very long pointy wings compared to the hawk. In relation to her body size, and she is three pounds in weight, so that would be uh, a kilogram and a, uh, and a half. Yeah, kilogram and a half. Uh, so, uh, she also has much shorter frontier legs than that of the hawk. Please take a look. And the reason for all these things is that I'd like you to wear falcons. in a completely different way from the hawk. Because falcons are predominantly avian bird catching specialists from the sky at high speed. 
when she spies a ptarmigan on the tundra, she won't consider herself in a worthy position until she's at least five or six hundred feet in the sky. And from there, uh, the falcon will use its whole body just like a missile. As she falls from the sky head first towards the prey, she's hunting, there'll be no flapping of wings. As she falls like a missile with a green line, she'll be using only her tail, just like a ship's rudder, to guide herself at high speed. And in these stoops and dives, the peregrine falcon, which is the only timing uh, information I have, has been timed at the top speed of 242 miles per hour. As she gets close to the prey that she's hunting, out from under the undercarriage come these two short stumpy legs compared to the hawk. Both fists clenched just like a boxer, she's delivering a very accurate high impact blow to the back of the other bird's head as she comes through at high speed. This impact blow uh, from Alba here at three pounds falling from 800 feet and reaching speed of 200 miles per hour is more than enough to crush any other bird's skull flat. So taking out the central nervous system in one quick accurate blow is the trait of how a falcon hunts. Okay, I'm hoping you get the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can see a few people nodding. Okay, everyone. The next biggest question before I get Alba in the air, and Alba means white in Scottish Gaelic, by the way. The next biggest question I get before I get her in the air, Andy, why is Alba wearing a leather crash helmet? <laughs> it is called a hood and it was devised by our ancestors over 2,000 years ago. We know this because there is a vast relief tile found in Syria depicting a falcon wearing a leather hood and it was carbon dated back to more than that period. Okay, let's get over the flying. See you're all getting a bit bored with the information. <laughs> okay, I'm using in my bag, it's called a lure, everyone. And the lure is just a piece of leather with some meat tied to it. As the falcon is much more aerial than the hawk and not working close to me, she could be two kilometres away after flushing game. And if she's not caught the game, I have to retrieve her and I do this by swinging the lure. But right now it's not hunting season. And I also use the lure to get the falcons fit at the beginning of the hunting season. So, I'd like you all to be aware, the falcon will be coming up and down these aisles. That's why I've left them free. And she could be travelling at 60, 70 miles per hour on a really day faster. If you have to leave the display or Alba is flying, please try and be aware of where you're walking. If you walk into her flight path, as she comes from my feet, you won't feel like being hit by a brick. <laughs> so for health and safety purposes, I have to warn you this. Oh, 
enjoyed this vlog something different on my channel next week i'll be continuing my scottish tour of the nc500 and the isle of sky when i'll be continuing along the north coast of scotland and then traveling down the west coast of scotland to take a boat ride to see the highest waterfall in britain remember to like this vlog and subscribe if you haven't already done so it costs you nothing and helps my channel grow you can also help me make more videos like this and buy me a coffee by using the link in the description below. I'll see you next week. Bye.